The Museum Roadshow is brought to you by 125 Apparel. We were assigned to the 77-2nd Squadron, the 463rd Bomb Group of the 15th Air Force. Uh, because there was a shortage of bombardiers, I only flew one mission with the crew I went overseas with. Uh, I got 21 missions in, and uh, it was on the 21st mission that I was flying with the lead crew and we were bombing a bridge over Bologna, Italy. And uh, we had just dropped our bombs and we got a direct hit that set the plane on fire. So we bailed out. I bailed out and I'm pretty sure it was around 20,000 feet and I had a flak suit on so I had to take that off so my chute didn't open till I was down eight, 9,000 feet. Anyway, when on the way down where there was some rifle bullets whizzing by my head and I knew they were waiting for me and landed and there were, there were German troops that, that captured me and about five other fellows at the same time. We were loaded on a train and uh, went up through the Brenner Pass and about halfway up around Verona, Italy, there was a there was a P-51 attacked the train and knocked the locomotive out. So we were unloaded and marched up to another train and we wound up in Frankfurt, Germany. And at Frankfurt we were separated. I was sent to an interrogation center at Oberussel, Germany. When we got shot down, we were flying a brand new B-17, which had the radar bombing equipment, the uh, nose cone. So the Germans thought I should know all about that new radar bombing, which I didn't know a thing about. Anyway, I was in that interrogation center for about 28 days. and. Well, they just made it miserable. Sleep deprivation and a lot of other things. But anyway, I was there. After I got through there, why I, I was sent up to Stalag Luft Three. That was in Eastern Germany. It's a POW camp where if you've ever watched Hogan's Heroes, somebody writing that must have been. Anyway, we had our Schultz and we had our Colonel Klink and Anyway, there we, well, because they weren't able to work us, uh, they just didn't give us enough to eat, so we'd give them any trouble. You can imagine what a bunch of guys would do if they had uh, all the energy that they should have had. A anyway, our diet consisted of from Germans, we had black bread, with, which was baked on sawdust, and we had dehydrated sauerkraut soup with mutton tallow and uh, spoiled Limburger cheese, <laughs> but we ate it. At the time, we were supposed to get one Red Cross parcel a month. Now, I mean one a week. Anyway, we used to get one normally about every three weeks. In those parcels, uh, they always included uh, a, a chocolate bar and a pack of cigarettes. Well, I didn't smoke, so, so I was lucky. I could trade my cigarettes for a chocolate bar. Uh, a anyway, on January 12th of 45, we were given an hour's notice. It was midnight that we were going to be marched away from Stalag Luft III. 
the Russians were getting close and the Germans didn't want the Russians to capture us because they wanted to use us for, oh, in order to get a better peace at the time with the United States. So anyway, we were marched about 45 kilometers and loaded in boxcars, these 40 and 8 cars. We were in there about three days and wound up at Stalag 7A, which was northeast of Munich at Moosburg. And they had brought prisoners from all over into there and it was so overcrowded. We were sleeping in big hospital tents, just barely room enough to lay down. But anyway, on uh, April the 29th of 45, it was about noon, and we heard quite a bit of artillery. And then all at once the Germans disappeared. And here comes the U.S. tanks. And about the fourth tank, here comes General Patton riding on the tank. And I stood not eight, ten feet from him. Anyway, we were glad to s see him. Within about four hours, he had a bakery in there baking bread for us. Anyway, after things settled down, why uh, we were assigned lots in order to to be transported home. They would transport people to a land shot, which is a one airfield close there, and then they were taken to Camp Lucky Strike in La Harve. And anyway, I was in one of the last groups to go. Therefore, well, I was lucky and didn't know it because when we got to La Harve, they were so crowded, they processed it, put us right on the ship to come home. And anyway, we came back on the, with the last convoy to come over the Atlantic. There were still a couple of Russian submarines that hadn't been accounted for, so we came back as a convoy. And I got to New Jersey and then got to go home for a 90-day recuperation furlough. By that time it was all over. I was, I was discharged in October, October 20th, I think, of 45. What was it like um, when you saw the land of your homeland? Oh, <laughs> well, it's just like, just like going to heaven, I guess. I've never been to heaven, but, uh, but it was just like, uh, well, just like you were starting to live again. Actually, uh, the experience, I went from about 165 down to 135, but it's an experience I wouldn't want to go through again, but I learned a lot by, you learn how to get along with, with your fellow men, and uh, uh, you learn to appreciate a lot of things. I, I feel lucky because I had quite a few friends that didn't come back. There were three on the crew I went overseas with that didn't come back. But uh, all in all, it's experience I, I wouldn't want anyone to go back through again. <laughs>